just ask someone else to take the test for me. Is it dark up there now when you wake up or is it always dark in Seattle? Not always dark in Seattle, um, but it is dark and, and it's actually a plus in some ways, minus in others. You're generally in, in the house now around 6, 630, gets dark around mm -hmm. 7. Um, Kennedy tends to see that. Daddy, it's dark. I, in order to actually get her down last night, I took her out and I took her out and showed her the moon. It was 730. Nice. Like, I was like, will you say goodnight moon? She says, goodnight moon. And went down. Yeah, so oh. it's getting darker. What about LA? Yeah, it's starting to get dark in the morning when I wake up. When you get off work, it's dark. But after week one, there's a lot of darkness out there for NFL teams. Welcome to Big Ben and K-Win on nofilter.net and YouTube. If you're more of an audio podcast, we got you covered. Download, five-star rate us, and subscribe anywhere you get your podcast. I'm K-Win. He's Big Ben, and he can't wait for NFL week two. Ooh, Dolphins, Bills on Thursday. Thank goodness I have Prime. Oh, yeah. A prime Prime is a good investment if you haven't made it already. It is, a, in my opinion, well, we live here in Seattle. Amazon's based in Seattle. You can get whatever you want in like three hours, maybe two, just depending on what route they take. Uh, but I am excited for week two in that the Bills Dolphins is, I mean, it's division, uh, division rivals, obviously. Yeah. Big division rivals. There's Tua, there's Josh Allen, there's Tyreek with what happened last week with Tyreek, Calais Campbell. The Bills had to come back against Arizona. They didn't get a look in the first half. Josh just took it in his own hands in the second half. Like this week one's always like, okay. But week two is like, are the teams really who they were in week one or was it an anomaly? And we'll see a lot of that this week. Well, in preseason now, there's not a lot of live fire. There's not mm -hmm. a lot of like starters out there. So you really don't know what you have when you're calling plays, when you're scheming up things. So I think Bill Belichick said the biggest jump you'll see from a team is from week one to week two. Mm -hmm. Like once you see what you got, you kind of know what you have and you know how you can scheme and call plays for. So I'm excited for week two. I'm also excited for Dolphins build tonight. You know, rivals, I don't know. Maybe they're siblings because the Bills are the older brother, right? Right. <laughs> but you got two different demographics. You got Buffalo, New York. In, not in the middle of nowhere, but it, it, more or less, you know, you got two franchises up there. You got the Sabres. You got the Bills. It's near the Canadian border. Those guys, everyone in Buffalo lives for the Bills season. Yeah. Miami is a little more transient, a little more passive, a little more if the Dolphins are good, we're going to go watch. You know, it's warm weather out there. You got I'm, I think the Dolphins showed up in like week 14 to Buffalo with short sleeves on. Like yeah. they, I get, they just don't know how to prepare for cold weather. But it is nice to see them early in the season kick off Thursday night football, um, get us ready for the week of NFL. I want to go back to one thing. That you Ooh, said. Let's hear it. Biggest jump from week one to week two. And I agree with you here. Marvin Harrison Jr., number four draft pick, came out and said, I was thinking too much. Like he was just, you know, is this the right route? He didn't play a lot in preseason. A lot of these guys didn't. So you saw a lot of ad hoc and whoever had the best athlete on the on the in the game generally won. So that's why it seems like the Bills end up winning. Able to ad hoc with Josh Allen and, and the running quarterback. But I agree with you. There are a lot of players, I think, that had down week ones that are going to have really good week twos. What we saw was a lot of these great Hall of Fame caliber rookie quarterbacks look like rookies. Mm -hmm. And I think it was the week of field goal kickers because all <laughs> these field goal kickers, like the guy in Pittsburgh had six. Jake Moody on the Niners had five or six. Like, there were so many field goals. That's because there's not enough starters playing in the preseason. It will be different week two, but I'm glad you brought that up about Marvin Harrison Jr. because I can't wait for the Rams-Cardinals matchup. So the Cardinals look good in the first half. They did all of this against the Bills without really much from Trey McBride or Marvin Harrison Jr. And the Rams on the other side are down Puka, but all that means is that love bond between Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup becomes that much tighter and stronger. 
20 targets, I believe Cooper Cup <laughs> had that first. I mean, that's and and Matt Stafford, or excuse me, Cooper Cup fits Matt Stafford's kind of persona. Balls in tight windows, you know, get it back to three step drop, boom, out. Cooper can run routes probably better than anyone in the NFL. And now the downside to Puka not being there is that Cooper Cup becomes wide receiver one. The only the only difference there is he operates out of the slot, but you're probably going to see a shadow from the top cornerback. And unfortunately or fortunately for the Rams, unfortunately for the Cardinals, the the wide or the cornerbacks for the Cardinals are just aren't that great. Yeah. I don't think it's going to matter. It's going to be Cooper, Cooper, more Cooper this week. The Rams have Demarcus Robinson. They have another receiver that I can't think of. But Stafford trusts Cooper. Cooper, And so he's got those eyes for Cooper. You know, when you want to find one one woman, you only have eyes for that one woman. Mm -hmm. He's only got eyes for Cooper Cup. And McCaffrey's coming back this week. He said he's going to play for the for the Niners uh, decision. I think they kind of saw that, you know, we'll, we'll beat the Jets. We'll, yeah. field goal, we'll field goal him to death. We don't need you, Christian. But it was – I mean, the offense was just awkward without him. Like you saw, they weren't able to capitalize on red zone opportunities. Ayuk dropped the ball again going back. He didn't play it at all in the preseason. He's probably not ready to go. I'm excited for week two. I think there's going to be a lot more scoring, a lot more touchdowns had out there. And then, um, you know, you see guys emerge like Isaiah Likely. That game was insane. Um, yeah. If he's wearing, you know, white colored shoes rather than black, then maybe it's a touchdown. You know, that type of stuff happens. But I do have a take for you. All right, let's hear it. My NFL take for this upcoming season, just after even watching week one, this will be the best wide receiver class in a long, long time. The rookie class. The rookie class. So Xavier Worthy, kind of a – right? He was kind of an afterthought. Like he's a track star, 4-2-40, comes out and scores two touchdowns, one on a reverse. Looks he looked really like nice. Tyreek Hill out there. He did. <laughs> like he's the cheetah. Who, what do we call Tyreek? Cheetah. Cheetah. He's the, Xavier's the panther. Okay. Whatever we want to call him. Uh, but Lad McConkey looked pretty good for the Chargers. You had Neighbors was the leading receiver for the Giants. Uh, Roma Dunze got bing, banged up a little bit, and then Harrison Jr. didn't have that good of a week. Brian Thomas Jr. scored a touchdown for the Jags. Yeah. Like this, it's a deep class. You you saw good things happen, even without probably the t maybe top two wide receivers in the class have really down down games. So this is going to be the top wide receiver corp in a draft for a long, long time. I mean, these guys are good. You guys are great. Even got that guy in Carolina, Xavier Leggett. Yeah, he's pretty Don good. Mitchell. You've like, got the guys out in San Francisco, uh, Ricky Parasol, um, you know, thankfully survived the incident, yeah. but he looked good in camp. You got to figure once they plug him into the system at some point, he's going to shine in that offense. I like that take on rookie wide receivers. And, and the nice thing is, I think what we've seen, the trend will be wide receivers are going to go earlier and earlier. It's a passing yeah. league now. It's an absolute passing league. There's going to be two two positions that are going to be highly valued quarterback mobile quarterbacks yeah that we're seeing and wide receivers because you snag a wide receiver we're seeing what the deal type of deals they're getting now if you can yeah. get a wide receiver on a rookie contract that's nearly as good as having a quarterback on a rookie contract it is so it's if you're if you're a football player go learn how to catch the ball and I don't know if you've watched much of Ohio State. It's a little out of our jurisdiction. But Jeremiah Smith, freshman, wide receiver of the Buckeyes, two touchdowns in week one, two touchdowns in week two. Why he should be near and dear to your heart? I believe he's Geno Smith's cousin. And Geno's play said, I've played with a lot of dudes. He might be the best ever. Kurt Herbstreet has said the same thing. Like, this guy is unreal. Like, we got to watch more Buckeyes football. Because he might be next. And I think there's a lot of wide receivers in college football. To your point, just get them on a rookie contract. You might let another wide receiver walk or trade them. Mm -hmm. And you can build around your core. Yeah. The new rookie quarterback deal is the rookie wide receiver deal. If you want to win in the NFL. K win it's, Big Ben trademarked it here today. Absolutely. Get your wide receivers on a rookie contract. It, to be honest, like, um, I'm, it, think of a, a wide receiver. You know, Cooper Cup comes to mind, right? He's been around a handful of years, but there's not that many, um, you know, there's not many like Cooper. 
you could think of Keenan Allen, stuff like that, but it, it is like it comes in waves, right? And I think this is a big wave for the wide receiver corps in the NFL. I'm excited. Xavier Worthy, I mean, he is plug and play Tyreek if they can get put some weight on him. But man, he's fast. Yeah. He's fast. Yeah. I don't know the first coach to do it or the first wide receiver to do it, but if you look at Devontae Adams in Green Bay, Devo, Tyreek Hill, like moving these wide receivers inside, outside slot, you know, screens in the backfield, like that's an offensive weapon. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these young wide receivers can do that. So when they get put on a team, it's not like, oh, I can't play the slot because there's someone in front of me. No, I'll just move to the outside. I'll move to the inside. I'll be in during bunch formations. Like the offense of the NFL is built around wide receivers right now. I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, I'm just hoping Marvin Harrison Jr. bounces back a little bit, which I think he will. Yeah. Get I out of his head. Just become game. more natural. Let's go. Let's go. College football. Yeah. I, I got a headline quick. Sorry. I know I know you right. wanted a headline. Yeah. Pac-12 resurgence. I know. I knew you were going there. We have had four teams, which I like. So we have Fresno State, San Diego State, Colorado State, and Boise State all opt into the Pac-12 or at least notify the Mountain West Conference of their desire Intent. to leave. Intent. Intent. They have made a decision. Okay. They have made a decision, k Wen, but they have not taken the action of jumping yet. What I think is going to ha happen is the committal of these four teams is going to be some bait yeah. to draw schools like California, maybe like Stanford, maybe I think the PAC 12 is banking on the realignment of the ACC. Yeah. Or the overall destruction demolition of the ACC. <laughs> I want your thoughts on that and then throw me in. I like it. I don't know what Stanford and Cal, I don't know if they sign like a contract or if it's a year to year, but I would love to see Cal and Stanford back playing West coast teams. And I love me some West Coast football and some West Coast teams. So I'm all in favor of it. I hope they do it and I hope it can it can it works out. I think what they're also going to do is with those four teams, they're decent markets, right? Boise is an emerging market. Fresno's kind of the inland. It's Empire. good for football. I don't know how good it is for basketball though. You're right. You're right. You, you if you're if you're the Cougs, your affiliation with the WCC, and maybe it is only for football. Maybe they continue their affiliation with the Mountain West Conference for all Olympic sports or whatever it may be. But I agree with you. But I, what I think does also happen is if you can go, and it's all about money, right? Yeah. This is all about money. And for a lot of, for, and Cal, Cal and Stanford are smart. But if you can go get numbers for a specific media rights package, that is on par with what you're getting with the ACC without the travel with kind of a, a better message for students athletes around their time and, and the ability to focus on academics as well. I think you have to listen if you're Cal and Stanford. You definitely should listen. I mean, it's not like the ACC conference is booming in football. Florida State's <laughs> lost. Clemson, we don't know which Clemson team. Is it the one that beat App State or the one that got destroyed by Georgia? Miami is looking good now, but that might be the only football team. And in basketball, I mean, I guess you got Duke, Carolina. It's good mm -hmm. for basketball, but I don't think Stanford and Cal can compete in basketball in the ACC right now. No. And I don't think they – I mean, you're flying – even in a, like a ROI, return on investment or cost-benefit analysis on, you know – us traveling all the way to, you know, wherever we're going, uh, Wake Forest to play a game, right, on a Tuesday or Thursday, and then you're, you know, driving to wherever. In the... I, I think that makes less and less sense to Cal and Stanford um, or surrounding yeah. those Olympic sports, you're right, in basketball. Because you got to travel out east, you play one game, I said on Thursday, I don't know the ACC schedule, then you play on a Saturday or Sunday, you come back, or you got to leave again. Yep. <laughs> You don't want to do that. You can drive to Fresno. Exactly. Make it easy on you. Bust the kids back and forth. All right. That that uh, story is in progress. I like it. I got a lot of things to cover. I'll cover oh. it quickly. It's kind of a rant or maybe my take about college football. USC is better than we all thought. 
Oregon is probably a little worse than we all thought. And Colorado is the exact same. Can't stop the run. Can't run the ball. They can't win on the offensive defensive line. So they just lose big games. They talk the talk. But all they have is two superstars in the NFL first round and probably a sub-500 team, Big Ben. Oh, yeah. I would agree. I would absolutely agree. The I got a text from a buddy. He said, uh, "What it, it, it's human human endangerment to allow uh, Shea Sanders. No, it's it's child endangerment to allow Shea Sanders to play quarterback behind the off- offensive line. Like, it's yeah. that bad. Um in respect to the other two teams you mentioned, I think Oregon is still trying to figure out pieces and parts. It's a different brand of football than they're used to. Um, you know, uh, it's not the same football in the Pac-12 that it is in the Big Ten. And I think they haven't even played the Big Ten. They played Boise State and Idaho. Yeah, but you're you're, you're you still got kind of the playbook that you overall are going to put in play in the Big Ten. You create the playbook for the teams, the conference you're going to play, and you don't play it for the you know you don't create a playbook for Eastern Michigan, right? You you create. A if that offense. is the case, this playbook is going to crash and burn once Big Ten. Football. Oh, let's wait. Let's wait to see what Dan Landing has. Maybe he's slow playing, not showing all his cards. Maybe he's intelligent in that way. Like I'm and not. Here's give you- my problem with Oregon, and you know better than I do. You win football games, especially in the Big Ten, on the offense and defensive line. The Ducks have let up more sacks in the first two games than all of last year. Like it's a leaky protection system. They can't stop the run. That guy. Gentry or Gentry will try whatever his name on Boise State. He ran Thrashed wild. Thrashed Thrashed him. Him. He's, a, like, he's an NFL quarterback. Can, yeah, but I don't know if you can Excuse fix me, NFL running back. the offensive defensive line weakness of the Ducks when you're playing Ohio State. You know, eventually you might have to play. <laughs> you got the Bay Area panics right now. I'm going to call them the Bay Area panics. No need to panic. They won both the games. They're Here's okay. where I'm going with this. Ducks will lose. In the Civil War Bowl this weekend, Whoa. I got beefs no, no, over no, ducks. No, 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 no. I got beefs over ducks. Mm. We're bringing it full circle. Pac 12s back, Apple Cup well, and Civil War. Ooh, this it weekend. is. Gosh, I forgot about those. The Apple Cup taking place, and based on I had another text from a buddy, he's like, "Listen, I'm don't tell anyone, but I'm 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 a Husky. I'm betting against the Huskies this week." Wow, they didn't look that great against Eastern Michigan. Again, Texas Tech isn't all that great, but the Cougs look pretty good. Uh, it will be interesting. Uh, there's no way Oregon State beats Oregon. There's no way. There is absolutely no way. There's just too many good athletes on Oregon versus Oregon State. Oregon State has saw some of the highest transfer rate of any program. First year coach, like, sorry, that's just. But what was the transfer in rate? Oh, Jiminy Christmas. Jiminy Christmas. Let's do it. Do we want a whiteboard and a calculator? Uh, you, how would you compare Oregon State to Idaho? I mean, is oh, I know, like this sleeper that we don't know about? This go look at Oregon's not alone in playing poorly in non-conference games this year. Like, go look across the league. Like, teams are they're just you don't want to get anyone injured. You don't want to show all your playbook. You just want to win the games and get out of there. Pay the they're other team. Barely for winning these. They're winning the games with special teams. Uh, I don't think that's their playbook. No pictures on the scorecard. Like, it doesn't matter. It's a win. It's a win. I don't think any the the committee's not going to look back at those and go, mm, they they only beat Idaho by you know. Uh, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying when someone shows you who they are, you got to believe them. And we see who the Ducks are. We got to believe them when they're no, playing these no, bigger games. No, no, that's not who the Ducks are. That's <laughs> sorry. That's what I'm saying. That's it's just not who the Ducks are. There's a lot more behind what's going on, and I think it's you know you, you don't have the playbook. You're probably figuring out run blocking schemes and so forth. They're doing it's an audition, K. Wind. You okay. go out there and you say, okay, we're going to try some things. We're going to make sure things work. We're going to make sure things work before we get in a Big Ten play, right? You do these things, and you're going to have mistakes when you do that. That's that. You you Dan Lanning's probably sitting there going, "I can't believe we won those two games because we were trying all these new things." And it's not that I couldn't believe, but we got by in trying these new things without exposing our our playbook, without all these things. I feel better going into Big Ten play. Okay, time will tell. And by the way, Idaho and the Kibbe Dome. 
Jiminy Christmas. Uh, okay. So you're you're scared for the Ducks. You're more up on the, the Trojans. Ducks. Yeah. Like Joel Klatt said it. I was listening to his podcast as I was walking Theo. What would Lane, or excuse me, I said Lane Kiffin, what would Lincoln Riley's team look like with an average defense? We might actually see it this year. They might have a better than average defense. They got DeAnton Lynn from UCLA, the defensive coordinator. They look better. Like last year, I think they gave up 49 points to Cal. That's right, Cal. 52 to UW. I mean, UW's great, but you can't give up 52 and like 40 plus in Notre Dame. Like you're not going to win any games. Like they have a better scheme. They have a better defense. I think USC could go 10 and 2, 9 and 3. They got this week off. They go to the big house and then they go to Wisconsin. I think they split those games and then they've got Penn State at home. And then Notre Dame, last game of the season. USC is in the playoff. 10 and 2. Well, if there's any. Um, and you know what? You always talk about the K Win Jinx. We're going to talk about the Big Ben Jinx. You oh. were high on Oregon and they are in the toilet. What the Jimmy? Get off Dan Lanning. The Big Get off Ben Dan Jinx. Lanning. The, the, what you do you have against to, Oregon? You need to you apologize to the Ducks. Did you get a foul pair of Nikes or Jordans recently that you weren't happy I'm with? Just, I'm just saying. Okay, I'll, I'll take the rope of dope. Yeah, they're down. <laughs> they're tall. Everyone drop their guard when Oregon comes into play. Eh, they're going to lose. No, I don't think that's the case. I think there's... Okay. Have Do you... they beat Ohio State on October 12th in Eugene? October 12th? Can you act, ask me like on October 5th? Just, All right. I mean, I'll ask you today and I'll ask you today. And I, I, I want to see if your story changes. You have seen once, the real ducks. Once they You've lose the beads, I want to see if you change your story. Oof. Okay. I think the Ducks are going to be just fine. I'm worried about Washington. They're going to let's talk about a little bit about the other programs that are going in it. Washington's going to be probably a six and six school in conference yeah. play, uh, more inclusive. They just first year for Fish, he can do everything he can, but he just doesn't have the athletes. UCLA probably same thing. No, Col- they're four wins. Four wins for UCLA. Four and okay. eight. You, you know better than I. Um, I want to touch on Colorado real quick, and then we'll Let's get out. Let's hear it. Deion Sanders has juiced everything he can out of Colorado. He's used yeah. every resource. He's bought most attention that program's ever seen in its lifetime. But the people, it's, Feinbaum said he'd be great, or someone came out and said he'd be great at a SEC school, and I agree. Yeah. Like you have, you just have more resources around you. You have more money to go hire really good assistants. You have, you know, jets to go recruit on. You got everything at an SEC school. I think Deion Sanders has gone as far as he possibly can at Colorado. And, and that's just due to the raw attention coming to the program. Not necessarily how good they are. Like if you really wanted to create a good program. We have know. an earthquake right now. But cut. keep going. Whoa. Yeah. That's Theo barking. Hold on, you All right, it, it's done. It's California. It's done. <laughs> that earthquake was Deion Sanders coming into Boulder. <laughs> I just got to say that Dion has done all he can. He draws the most attention to the program, which benefits him from transport. But when you got kids coming in and out and in and out and in and out, especially on the offensive line, like you guys got to, you got to get kids that are used to working together. The off- offensive line is more of a unit than anything other, anything else. And when you got transfers coming in each year, every year, and you're just trying to, to plug holes, that's not going to work. They're going to be a, you're going to win a few games in the Big Twelve, but not much. And after team, and after Sanders, after his son's lease for the NFL, he's going to be a free agent. And if I'm Dion, I take a look in the face and be like, do I want to go somewhere for six, seven years? Because that's what it takes to build a program. You can't build a program three, four years. We'll see. I think this was all a part of his plan. Listen, I'm going to go to Colorado for two years. We're going to pay in the Pac-12. Things change. We're in the Big 12. I'm going to get on my platform and bring all the eyes and attention to the program to uplift the program. Get my son to be an NFL first rounder. Get Travis Hunter 
to be an NFL first rounder. And then I'm going to get the bag and go to an SEC team. I, I don't see him staying at Colorado once his son leaves. I think, one, he's got his son to the NFL. But two, I don't think he can do anything else at Colorado. Look at Ohio State. The rumor is they have a $20 million team. Colorado can't put $20 million on no. the field. They can't compete against Georgia and Texas and Bama. So I think he's going to leave for the SEC. Where he goes, we're going to have to see where the musical chairs end up. Well, that's a long look in the mirror, right? Like you can't you, – if you come to a SEC school – and the LMI base get the idea that you're just going to leave after a couple of years. No SEC school wants to be known as the stepping stone for another school. Yeah. Like that's your be all end all. You better sit down in the chair and find it at least is a pretty comfortable. And I don't know if Deion Sanders translates all that well to a lot of SEC programs. And I don't say that. I, I say that purely on kind of staying time and like they they want to know that you're going to build the program right you're not just going to try to put a winner on the field but you're going to want to build a program right there's a difference like i can put a six and six team on the field but to put a team that's got some staying power you got to recruit well and like go and get assistant coaches that want to be at that program with you yeah well i think the teams or the schools you want to be at in the sec I think their coaches are pretty stable. Yeah. I almost think it's a program that wants to be relevant again on the bigger schedule, like a Florida State, his alma mater, mm -hmm. or even Gainesville, Florida. Like, I think those kind of schools would be desperate. Yeah. Or even a Clemson if Dabo can't get it together. I think you're going to need a desperate power for school. Or because I don't think he's going to take a job at like Vandy. Right. No, or like no. <laughs> they would Arkansas, run him out of Vandy or Arkansas. I don't think he's going to no. take that kind of job. No, I agree with you. All right, all right. I'm We're excited. We're almost out of here. Football. Fantasy football tonight. Devon Achen is he going to play? Is he not going to play? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll That's find out one. 90 minutes before. I'm hoping he plays because my backups my aren't backup. looking very my good. My backup is Zeke. Ooh, yuck. Zeke kind of got a Teddy last week. He, he did. <laughs> what was this earthquake anything fall off you okay no it just felt like someone was like moving my desk okay but we're okay everything's okay for the Blacks, first time for everything Earth, the jalen green shoe signed is still okay earthquake on the pod i love yeah. it all right you want to take it all right out? let's wrap this up at big ben k win underscore at big ben k win underscore everywhere you look and find your social media, Instagram, TikTok, Threads, Facebook, we're everywhere. Download, listen, subscribe, five-star, review us anywhere you get your podcast. Drop your comments below. I'm K when he's big, been week two. I can't wait. <sighs> Anthony Richardson, you better do it again. Who you got tonight? Um, I'm going Miami because I don't Whoa. think Josh Allen – trust all his weapons or knows them quite yet i think miami has to win it's at home i think in south beach i think mike mcdaniel schemed something up listen if the bills couldn't slow down arizona they're not going to slow down the dolphins on the road if a chain plays game over if he doesn't yeah. we'll see boom boom stay safe you too